Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Joy Candy, and I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Uh, and I'm dramatic. I really love this dress. Anyways, welcome back. Uh, today I am talking about my content creation journey. So a few months ago, I did ask you guys on my Insta stories. Um, if you do not know that, follow me on Instagram. Shameless plug. Um, but I did ask on my Insta stories if you guys have any questions about content creation and how I started it and the business end of it, please go ahead and ask. And I would do a video, which I'm doing right now, answering those questions. So, oh, people have told me that I talk with my hands too much, so okay. I'll keep them down. Uh, so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm answering those questions. So let's get started. What do I do? I am a content creator. Um, I've been doing this for nine years, it's almost nine years. We're going on nine years. So I started off as a blogger. Um, I had a blog post called Our Style Kenya on blogpost.com and that ran for a little bit before I changed it to Just Ray Candy and then I moved on to social media, Instagram, um, Facebook, YouTube and on and on and on. So when I first started it was all about fashion, specifically how to dress fabulously on a budget. And at that time I had just moved back from the US and my cousin had introduced me to the Combat, Toy, uh, Adams, what's the other one? Ngara, we used to live in Parkland, so Ngara was like on my way home, so it was perfect. And I used to be able to get clothes for really, really cheap. I'm talking about from Gikomba, I used to shop a lot Gikomba where I could get dresses for like 50 bob, 100 bob, 20 bob, 10 bob. And I would alter them and post about them and just show people how to dress on a budget because I was broke and we did not have the type of money where we could shop in malls. So that was my only option and I decided to share that. So after a while, I slowly started to expand um, more into lifestyle. So fashion, beauty, skincare, food, travel when I would travel. Um, and that is the basic history of how I started um, and how I came to be where I'm at right now. So if you're curious what a content creator is, it's basically somebody who creates content for the digital media. So me, lifestyle content creator, um, other people can do politics, uh, food, health and fitness, whatever it is, as long as you're creating content and giving information for the digital media that is content creation. Now, a lot of people will sometimes call me an influencer and I do not like to be called that just because I feel like it really simplifies the work that I do and I feel like I do a lot of work. Um, it's not just a simple, I take a selfie with the product and be like, Samsung, love it. It's, it's, there's, there's a lot of work behind, like the actual business end um, involves a lot. Uh, for example, the management aspect, um, being able to write proposals, come up with concepts, um, getting meetings with clients that is hard work, um, being able to prove yourself, the actual shooting aspect, shooting, editing, just the overall work that it takes to just get that one piece of content out there. So I'm not an influencer, I am a content creator. Also because I create the content myself. I do not have a team, I am my own team. I shoot, I edit both video and photos. Uh, so did you ever think that you could actually make a living out of content creation? No, I did not. Like I said, it was a hobby. Um, I think the first time when it finally hit me, like there is a chance that this can turn into something outside of it being a hobby was um, Nancy Mwai. Nancy Mwai was like the first blogger ever, at least that I know of in Kenya. She's our mother. So I will always like respect to mother. Mind you, we're only like a year apart, but mother. So she started blogging. She always used to talk about fashion and beauty and makeup and she would like sell items that she got from Gekomba. But then I remember a few years later that she went to Germany for some like fashion week and it was with a brand 
under some company i can't remember the exact details but i remember just being like that is so cool like and at the time money was not in my head i was just like oh my gosh maybe this could take me somewhere like literally like maybe they can fly me out somewhere with this so that was exciting when i saw that and i was incredibly impressed and super motivated and then i really started following sharon as well and sharon really had like a business sense when it comes to content creation and you know being a fashion blogger and i was also very much in awe of what she was doing i was shooketh with how she was doing it because when i started i started off with you know a really crappy uh camera phone the photo quality was horrendous um because i didn't have money for any of that stuff and my mom was not gonna chip in for that because in her head she was just like i i'm not like that's ridiculous so you can just take photos of yourself no and of course it made sense like she works hard for her money like this was not something that was huge in kenya at the time that's when i really decided to up my game with photo quality and um editing my photos and if you see the, first of all this is an example of photos that i started off with then this is a photo when i just learned how to edit oh and then i grew up to like this um and with the photos that you see now but i decided to up my game because sharon's photos would just like slow clap for that and i decided to invest in equipment and slowly start growing from there and then the industry slowly started to kick in in kenya and then we slowly started making money and then eventually i turned it into a full-time job and voila i personally do not have the money to get really good equipment or really expensive clothes so how do i start off as a lifestyle and fashion content creator um so for that like i said i also didn't have that i started off with what i had so my thing was mainly gekomba toy market and places like that and with the equipment aspect i started off with a digital camera and if you guys if 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 you're in your early 20s y'all don't understand how camera phones were back then it was a bare minimum like it was catching like it just takes your photo like there was no editing there was no facetune there was no apps there was no editing software photos were raw like what you got is what you got and then after the digital camera my sister when i told her that i really want to try to get into this um, my photos weren't good enough she decided to give me her old digital camera from Kishila, um, where the screen was broken and it didn't have a viewfinder so what we used to do is basically just hold it up and like try to aim it to where we feel that the person might be in the frame i.e me we would just take the picture and then i would upload it to my laptop like my school laptop and then just try to crop it like that was the extent of editing it was just crop it until you're in the frame uh, then while I was in school, I was also interning um, at KTN at the time for maybe six months or so. And while doing that, I was also working in a production company where I would either act or I would be behind the scenes. The acting thing was for a very short period of time and I did it twice. But majority of the time it was behind the scenes where I would do a few jobs here and there and I'd get paid. And that money, I would slowly save it up and I used that to buy my equipment. And the equipment that I have right now, and it's a huge, huge, huge tip. I decided that it was smarter for me to buy used equipment so for example the huge camera that I use for the professional photos that one is a very used camera I still use it to this day and when I bought it it was used so if you are trying to save up for equipment and if you use the right website such as Amazon or if you use BH BH no, this if you use that you can actually find used equipment that is in great condition and save a lot of money in the process and yes granted even when it is used they do still tend to cost quite a lot especially if you do not have the money at all but again I saved up I first started off with what I had then I saved up until I was able to get what I could afford what is the hardest part about what you do that's kind of a vague question but there are a lot of hard things about what I do and each I don't know obstacle that I have gone through changes 
over years and over time but um, I guess the hardest thing or the hardest part of what I do when I first started off is getting clients or companies to even be willing to sit down with me and talk about potential collaborations because at the time companies didn't understand what content creation was they didn't understand what an influencer was they didn't understand why would I pay this one human being when I can just buy a billboard. Um, I used to cry so many times after meetings and meetings where I wouldn't get it. Um, I'd be shortlisted but then clients would pull out halfway or um, I used to get taken advantage of so badly and I'll tell you that story for sure. I was ripped off so bad. Now I think the hardest thing is time management. Um, Thankfully, and I'm very um, humbled and very blessed to be at a point now that I don't have to look for work, jobs come to me. Being able to be willing to give away some of my responsibilities, I am fighting with that so much. How did your mom deal with you choosing to be a content creator? So like I mentioned before, my mom was pretty simple in the sense that she did not understand what I was doing because, I mean, she's a professor and her only goal was listen i just want you to be happy but right now in your early 20s i need you to at least have one degree at the very least just to fall back on but generally she never really got bothered if her friends would ask she'd just be like me i don't know what she does i know she goes to class i have seen her podcasts and she doesn't borrow money literally that's how my mom she's like because she's not asking me for money to buy anything so if she wants to take photos of herself in jeans Take photos of yourself in jeans. I don't know what the point is, but just take them. So that's how my mom was. She didn't, she, yeah, she, was, she was pretty chill. Um, how did you manage blogging while in school? Uh, like I said, it wasn't that difficult. It just was one of those situations where, you know, it was all about time management. I would take like an hour a day, maybe three times a week to work on it, take photos, um, do a lot of studying. I did a lot of studying, learning how to edit, uh, learning how to use different types of um, software, whether it was Photoshop, Lightroom, uh, learning how to edit with Final Cut, uh, DaVinci, just doing a lot of research so I could understand the editing aspect. Also doing a lot of research on how to take photos, uh, what cameras are best to use, what lenses, um, what I should invest in, what I should not invest in when it actually comes to equipment, things like that. So there's definitely, you definitely have time. Did you have to do specific classes to do all the things that you do right now with content creation? No. I went to the University of YouTube. Um, for school, I did psychology and philosophy, so they didn't really exactly help me out with what I'm currently doing, especially with the technical aspects. But um, yeah, YouTube, you can learn everything and anything from the internet. What are your biggest tips when trying to get paid as a content creator? Okay, um, for that, I think there's also something else about um, how many followers do you need to start getting paid. So I think I'll answer them at the same time. So um, biggest tips is number one, you need to have some sort of an audience because without an audience, um, clients will not understand why they should pay you to promote their product. Um, so you do need some sort of audience and how you build your audience um, changes. Uh, number one, you have to be consistent with how often you post and you need to post. If you don't post anything, there's no reason why people will follow you. If you want to start getting into content creation, not just posting content about your passion. I mean, of course, that is the first thing and the only thing that you're really going to focus on in the beginning. And that totally makes sense. If your passion is fashion, talk a lot about that. But you also need to include things that you're good at. People love to learn from other people and that is something that I've picked up over the years. People don't just want to see something and be like, ooh, pretty. They actually also want to learn from you. So if you're really good at makeup, teaching people how to do makeup. If you're really good at photography, having a few videos or content here and there about different ways to, you know, take photos, um, angles, things like that. But teach people what you're really, really good at because people love to learn. 
Another way to build your audience is collaborating with other content creators who are in your field. So now you have your audience. So how many followers do you need to even start making money? I know people who have 4,000 followers who make money. I also know people who have 200,000 followers who don't make money. It's not necessarily about your actual numbers. It's what type of content you actually churn out. Now, the perfect example about the people who have like 200,000 followers who don't make money, it's because of the content that they push out. It's not content that um, a company will look at and be inspired by and want to associate themselves with you. Either A, it's not their own content, they're just reposting other people's work, or they're posting content that a lot of companies would be too scared to associate themselves with you. For either a it's too ratchet too raunchy too aggressive too political yes that's an actual thing a lot of companies don't like to associate themselves with people who are too political um, so that's a reason why somebody with a lot of followers might not get paid a little trick on how to get the right eyes to look at your content and by that I just mean companies or clients or whatever for example if you are in an event for makeup and you just happen to be there and you like the makeup and you create amazing content for them find out what their actual Instagram handles are and tag them let them see it keep posting eventually they will see it and be like oh hmm, I like that type of thing. Um, another way to start getting paid as a content creator, working in teams, um, not necessarily large groups of people, because you also have to remember that the money has to uh, be divided equally. Like I said before, collaborating with other content creators, you can do the same for paid content. So for example, me, I had a great concept for Samsung for the S7, and when I did that proposal, I knew what I wanted to do. I could not do by myself. So I collaborated with Lyra, who is an amazing, amazing photographer. And we were able to come up with an amazing concept and we shot it, we did it, and the client loved it. So um, collaborating with people uh, really does help where you guys can contribute what you're really good at. For example, if you're a photographer, if you have a really good concept and you have a friend who's a content creator who has a bigger following, pitching the idea to them and being like, hey, why can't we just work together and make that sh money? YouTube versus blogging versus social media. What makes more money? Okay, so blogging has gone down quite a lot. Uh, I think it's just mainly the reason is because people have become less and less, or actually no, more and more lazy in the sense that if you can get all of your information on social media from one post why click all the way on another blog i low-key have found myself very guilty of that i follow a lot of you know tabloidy ish instagram pages like baller alert and hollywood and sometimes i'll read a story that is so good and then at the base they're just like read the rest on the blog and i'm just like nah it's okay i get the gist i'm good uh youtube you can make money off of YouTube, but more in the sponsored posts versus AdSense. Um, social media right now is pretty big in Kenya. Um, so I would say social media, YouTube, blogging is iffy. What should I know before pitching myself to a client? And also, how do I pitch myself to a client? Okay. So this is my profile. I'm trying to remember if this is old or young or it's relatively young. What I usually do is I just edit things as I move along um, according to, I guess, um, companies, clients, things like that. So this is my profile. It is always on PowerPoint, but I send it over on PDF. The first page is just a photo of myself when I used to be skinny or well, skin, well, thinner. Oh, look at that waist. So, anyways, outside of that, I give a very brief description of who I am, what I do, um, nominations that I've had. Then the next page is just a collage of collaborators or companies that I've worked with in the past. Then screenshot of my social media pages. Uh, so Facebook, Instagram, and then screenshot of my YouTube channel and blog. And then, hmm. Okay, usually between this, I don't know, I don't have it on this uh, PowerPoint, but between this, I would have a screenshot of my stats. So when you go onto your Instagram page, if you click on insights, this is the information that 
all clients want to know so for the audience they want to know things like not necessarily the growth but they want to know location of your um demographic your people and the age range and then you have the gender male and female and then the bottom part just basically shows like when people are usually online the most is is they also want to know things like your activity um, impressions reach and your content what kind of content does the best on your page so that is what I'd usually put on that and if I wanted to include my blog I would also show the dashboard information for that, um, my stats, things like that. Also YouTube is the same thing. So then after that, I just give a very brief description of companies that I am either working with currently or huge companies I've worked with in the past. So Ciroc, High Design, Mac, Garnier, Samsung. I just like the true love thing. Um, like I just, it was so dope. This photo took forever. See this? This literally took, I think it was me and, was it Sunita? Yeah, Sunita did the body art. This took freaking like six hours. We started doing the body work at 6 a.m. And we took this photo at like one in the afternoon. So I'm just proud of it because this was a lot of work. And Sunita, you killed it. Boo-boo. Anyways. I digress so that is what my profile looks like okay so now how do you create your rate card so there's a website called webfluential.com um, it is also I think it's South African it's a South African website where you put all of your information in that site your Instagram Facebook YouTube blog Twitter everything and it has an algorithm it figures out your engagement your following and then it tells you how much you should charge per post now that thing is in dollars. It usually tends to make you feel like, wow, I'm so fancy. I should be paid so much money. But um, Kenya is slightly different. So you're just using that to get an idea. So you need to alter it to make sense. For me personally, I don't do on a post to post type of rate. I do on a monthly basis. That's how I work nowadays. I don't do short-term contracts. It's either three months, six months, or year-long contract. Um, if you could do one thing outside of content creation, what would it be? If I was not a content creator, or if I was still doing this part-time, I'd probably still be working in production. Um, I really did enjoy script writing. The only issue is that in Kenya, man, that stuff is hectic. The schedule is crazy. I mean, like, writing a whole movie, like, the first draft needs to be done in two days type of thing it's cray cray so um i'd probably do that if i was not doing that maybe acting just bringing that back because i was thinking styling nope hail to the no never again never that serious how do you handle your money and your savings uh this was from a girl who i know she's a content creator i'm so glad you actually asked this question Okay, so now here's the thing. In this industry, um, and it's not just necessarily content creation, even in the music industry and things like that, sometimes checks take a long time to be cleared for multiple reasons. Um, number one, if let's say I do my job between now and the job ends on November 30th, usually that check sometimes can take anywhere between 30 to 45 days for the PO to go through and then for you to be released your checks. So you have to be very smart with what you do with your money. So when that has happened to me in the past, who that stuff like shook it you. It stresses you out. So because of those mistakes, I've learned that you really need to be smart with what you do with your money. So what I do is I have two bank accounts. I have two bank accounts at Stanshot. I used to have multiple accounts in different banks, but I just thought it would just be easier to just have everything under one bank. So Stanshot is where I have all my accounts and I have two different accounts. So I have one account, which is my day-to-day -day life. Um, that one, I used to also have my savings, but I've taken my savings out of that and moved into another account and I'll explain why. So what I do with my regular account is that's where the smaller checks go to so this is money that's supposed to sustain me regular stuff you know hair nails waxes grocery shopping shopping for the house uh, clothes here clothes there so that's my day-to-day -day account so it's also the account that I usually have on my phone for the app so it's the one where I can pay my rent easily now my savings account the reason why it said separated from my other account is because this
there's something very specific that I want to do with this account and that is I am waiting to receive one other check because I had a specific goal that I needed to have in this account and this account I want to use it for investment I want to get to the point where my money makes me money and I don't have to work for that money for it to make me money I want the money to make itself if that makes any sense so once I meet my financial advisor we're gonna be going through two different investments that I want to get into at the moment before I decide what I actually want to physically do with the money so one of the investments I'm thinking about getting into is mutual funds and the second one is local bonds so local bonds is basically investing into the country's debt or buying into the country's debt so how it works is, um, let's say I decide to invest a million shillings into the local bond. If I invest a million shillings into it for a period of, let's say, five years, and the reason why I'm saying five years is because, again, let's say I have a million shillings and I don't exactly know what to do with it just now, I'd rather put it into something where I'm making interest out of it. Like the money is not just sitting there and just, it's collecting money while it's sitting there. So with a 10% interest, if I have a million shillings, I'll basically be getting around 100,000 shillings every single year for five years. And then after five years, once it matures, I can get the money back. And since I don't have to deal with the actual government, I'm dealing with Standard Chartered, I'm guaranteed to get the money back because I've wanted to get into local bonds. But then I was just like, if I have to deal with the government, what is the worst thing that has ever happened to you in this industry? I have been bamboozled, ripped off, um, straight up conned, straight up taken advantage of by agencies, companies. Like, they out here, boo. Ooh, some people are not, especially in the beginning years ago, they're like not, oh God, they were so just, would take advantage of you first job that i ever got where they were willing to actually pay me that was maybe four and a half maybe five years into this job not job but into the hobby and um before that i had been offered a few you know exposure jobs where i would be paid with exposure and of course i, I fell for some of them i'm not gonna lie i just was like hey it might help me it might not let's just see what happens but this one agency it was the agency's fault not the company let's just say that and i don't want to mention who they are they don't exist anymore anyways but this agency basically contacted me saying that hey we have this client that'd love to work with you so i sent my read card and i think my read card was um i think they had asked for a blog post and a few instagram posts not instagram but like social media posts and i think i had charged something like 20k and i was super excited so they hit me back up saying that they had sent the recut to the client that they really loved the work that i have done but they did not have that type of money so i was like okay cool what's their budget they said they can only do for 5k i was a little bit stunned but also i was like i've never been paid before anyway so why not do it i was probably gonna do it for free anyways who am i what am i who the hell do i think i am so I was like, okay, go, let me do that. So I accepted, I did the blog post, I did the social media posts, the whole shebang. Apparently the client loved it. They hit me back up saying, hey, can you just do a few more just so that the client can be, like can see that you're really into the brand and they can want to work with you in the future. So I was like, okay, I feel like you're stretching it, but sure, content is content. I was probably gonna do it for free anyways. That's what I just kept on doing, like saying in my head. So I decided to give them a few more social media posts. Mind you, again, 5K. And also this was to push an event. Then they hit me back up saying, um, the client would like you to do another blog post. I told them it's physically not possible. Tell them I'm sorry. Now you're just like pushing it. If they're willing to pay me another 5K, maybe it's something that we can discuss. If not, it's a no for me. She gets back to me and she says, um, sorry, they're not able to do that because they wanted you to come to the event and you doing the blog post was payment for the event but i was just like but i already did the first why am i what what but i was just like okay cool whatever um i guess i'm just not gonna come thank you but no thank you i can't do this so she said okay cool then she hits me back up a day later saying that the client has approved that i can go to the event 
So I go to the event and guess who comes up to me? The client. So the client comes to me telling me, oh, I just saw your work. We loved it. We loved everything. But then she asked, why did you not want to continue pushing the content that we really wanted you to do? Was it too much? And I said, no, the content was not too much, but you are not paying me enough for me to do that. She looked at me very confused, but then she also looked a little bit embarrassed where she was just like, I'm sorry that we offered you such little money. We did not mean to be so disrespectful. Um, we figured that that would be a very fair rate considering that Kenya has not hit the market yet like that. So then I tried to be polite and I was just like, I understand, but also you can't expect me to do that much work for equivalent of like $50, which was 5K. So she was like, what do you mean $50? And I was just like, that's how much you guys were willing to pay us, $50. That girl was so confused and livid and just so, I'm sorry, what? So what exactly had happened was the client had already given agency the budgets and what they wanted content creators to do. Then the agency hit us up asking us for our weight cards. Majority of us had already asked for less than what the client was offering. The client was actually offering 30K per blog post and they actually wanted us to do three. So I could have made 90K. So I got bamboozled out of 85K because I was just so desperate to make any money because I was going to do it for free anyways. That's what I kept on telling myself. I was going to do it for free anyways. Wow. Me, I've been showed fire in this industry. Oh, there was a time that I got an MC job. I hope she's watching this video. There was a time I got an MC job. This girl said that she was going to pay me. I did the job thinking that I was going to get paid after. Have you ever just seen somebody who just evaporates into thin air? Never return my phone calls, never return my texts, no nothing. Be careful with people in this place. Also, get contracts written. Don't be trusting folks. Would I recommend somebody doing content around their family? i.e. doing vlogs, blog posts, Insta stories, Instagram on their family, husband, kids, etc. Um, I don't know. For that, I'm just to each his own. I personally would not do that. I like to keep my family life super private. Um, if I had any kids, I might or might not show them. I don't know. Um, to each his own for that it's up to you you like it's your family you decide what you want to do with them there's some family content creators who are amazing like like Tatiana Mama Olive I love like she like she's showing the perfect way on how to be a mom still have a life still work still be able to work out having two kids like she's a beast and I like the fact that she's able to share that I think she's also very brave to be able to share that because some of y'all just have way too much time on your hands DMing people about their parenting skills and what they should do with their kids and how they shouldn't do that with their kids. Like, dude, like, mind your business. You do that with your kids. Leave other people's children alone. So that's the reason why I don't know if I'd ever do that because if you come for my kids, I'm coming for your throat. And I don't even have kids, and I already feel like I would do that. Because, ooh, hmm, hmm. I'm not the one. Okay, so that's it. I think I've give, I've answered majority of the questions that were given to me. I hope it helps. I am working on the second video with Christine Moragan Jockey and also my other friend and Sophia Sophie Musof. She has like 17 names. Um, they're both fashion designers about the fashion designing aspect and the fashion world, how to start your own fashion line, things like that, mistakes that they've done in the past. Um, I wanted to separate them. At first I wanted to put them together, but it's just way too much information to condense into one video. Sorry, so my thing died on me because I talked too damn much. Anyway, thank you guys. Bye. See you. Bye. Oh my God, I need to stop talking. Is this off? No, it's not. Okay.